first things first, I'm a skeptic. Drop this and let the whole world feel it. It's Tony Queen's realization, it can hold you down like globalization. You shouldn't want a bad bitch like this. Drop it low, it always been like this. Cup of trade, cup of cash, cup of brat, economic waste, you should take that. <sighs> let me explain that further. So the original claim is that as a result of globalization, the movement of people and the migration has increased. But however, as a skeptic, you don't believe in globalization, you believe in regionalization. So thereby you cannot, you cannot claim that human trafficking is a result from, from globalization. However, as mentioned, we believe in regionalization. So as a socialist skeptic, you would probably claim that human trafficking is a result from the regionalization occurring in the sense that the developed regions have the power to exploit the not the not so developed regions, but uh, then again, one cannot really analyze this much further because skeptics don't really believe in globalization. So, how can then human trafficking be a result of oh. globalization? Hold on, hold on, hold on there. We transformationists we differ from other theories in two main fundamental ways. They argue that there is no single cause behind globalization and that the outcome of processes of globalization is not really determined. Even though transformationists describe many of the same general changes involved in, in globalization, their approach is significantly less assured about the historical uh, trajectories of these changes and less limiting of the factors uh, driving globalization. So, for instance, hyperglobalists argue that the power of national, um, sorry, hyperglobalists argue that the power of national governments is fading, and skeptics argue that it is growing. Uh, transformationists, however, uh, view the nature of national uh, governments as changing, but a description of this change as merely growing or fading is oversimplified. Another example would be that the transformationists believe that a new world order or architecture is emerging and although the precise nature of the emerging patterns of, uh, of uh, stratification is not yet clear. So I would say that in general transformationists have l a much less determinate uh, understanding of the processes of globalization than for example the hyperglobalists and the skeptics. Transformationalists believe that the range of factors influencing processes of globalization is much greater and that the outcomes are much less certain. But, I mean, since transformationalists, I mean, we cannot really determine whether the outcomes of globalization are good or bad, so it is difficult to see if human trafficking is a result of it. And, I mean, if it is, I'm say if, if it were, if it's either good or bad. Transformationalist. No certain outcomes or causes But it is a thing and it's happening In the world that we are living in But baby, baby, don't be afraid Results are gonna come some of the universe See all trade Hyper globalist. Hyper globalization. Hyper globalist. Hyper globalization. Your thoughts are crippled. I'm the one that's right. Globalization is the guiding light. Borders come out like thunder. The trace is about to roll. Globalization of everyone's soul. <clears throat> what does loyalty mean? Let me try to explain. As a hyperglobalist, we believe that globalization is happening. And as a neoliberal globalist, I believe that most of the outcomes are good. Um, of course, we can see that some countries are worse off than others, but in general, there are only or mostly good outcomes of globalization. And therefore, I would argue that maybe, perhaps, human trafficking is a consequence of globalization. 
but I would still think that you have to look at the greater picture. There are so much more better things happening and good consequences coming from globalization, and therefore human trafficking shouldn't be such a big deal. Shut the fuck up, Ross. I'm so tired of having to listen to your nonsense. Quiet, please, and let me explain what the real deal is. Robert Nozick famously, famously discusses his theory of liberty when one's rights are being violated. He states that for something that one owns to be right, it has to be acquired when it was un unowned, owned from the previous owner. To give an example, we all start off with 1,000 kroners each, then some of us are very interested in soccer, and of course, we want to see Slatan play. We buy our tickets for 300 kroners each, knowing that 50% will go to Slatan himself, but we will still see the game and still pay for our tickets. Turns out, we want to do this again, but this time we bring as many friends as we possibly can. This will then mean that Slatan will be really rich because of us, and we will not have as much money left. The money is not uh, is not distributed equally, but Nozick implies that it would be a violation of Slatan's rights to demand him to distribute his rightfully earned money back to the people. Nozick believes that everything is, that is rightfully owned, whether it's money, property rights, or whatever it might be, really does belong to the person that's earned it. This of course means that Nozick thinks of government interference as violating rights. Well, this is getting boring, isn't it? Hi, Mr. Drunk Rhino. Hello, Mr. Santa Claus. Dear class, we're sorry for the technical difficulties. But, but we, we tried! tried.